Welcome to video C5.3.2 where we're going to look at equilibrium position. So pause the video and have a go at these four questions. Okay, so hopefully we've chosen the right words here. So a reversible reaction is where the reactants turn into the products, but the products also turn into the reactants. If a reversible reaction occurs in a closed system, then a dynamic equilibrium is established. If no reactants or products escape, equilibrium is reached when the forward and reverse reactions occur at exactly the same rate. And then at equilibrium, the amount of reactants and products remain the same. So they're not necessarily equal, but they do remain the same. So learning objective for today is to describe what we mean by equilibrium position and then predict the effects of changing different reaction conditions on the equilibrium position. So first of all, what key points from last lesson are shown on these diagrams? So this diagram on the left shows that the um, rate for the forward reaction decreases. Remember, the rate is the gradient. So as the grade, so that's the so the forward reaction, the rate's decreasing, and the reverse process that's increasing until they level out at the same. So. Um, at this point here for the dotted line, that's when dynamic equilibrium is reached. Um, and then this one on the right is showing, so at the point C is when we've got dynamic equilibrium reached. And at point C, we can see, hopefully, if I draw, oops, sorry, it's not a very good straight line, that at the point C, the amount of products and reactants is not changing anymore. So they are remaining the same, but you'll see they're not the same as each other. So the position of equilibrium is something that's quite difficult to get your head around. But the, the position of equilibrium just describes the relative amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium. So remember, when we write our chemical equation, the reactants are on the left-hand side, and our products are on the right-hand side. But of course, if it's a reversible reaction, then you could write it the other way around because the reactants turn into the products and the products turn into reactants. So if we say the equilibrium is on the left, then that means we've got more reactants and products. And if the equilibrium is on the right, we're saying that there's more products than reactants. So a good way of thinking about it is you've got these kind of pictures here. So if, it's, if the position of equilibrium is on the left, that means I've got more reactants than products. And therefore, I've got less product, so I'm going to get a low yield. So remember, the yield is the amount of the product that we make. So if it's on the left-hand side, we get a low yield. If it's on the right, so this picture on the right shows that I've got more products, which is why. So the mass of the products is bigger, so the seesaw is going down in that direction. So if I've got more products, that's going to give me a high yield. So um, I want you to just... See whether this is left or right. So pause the video, have a think, see whether it's left or right. Okay, so the position of equilibrium here is on the left. On this one, it's on the right. So on this one, we've got more products than reactants. So that's on the right. So on this one, I've got more reactants and products. So the position of equilibrium is on the left. So now we've got numbers. So we've got more reactants than products. So the position of equilibrium is on the left. Here we've got more reactants and products. So our position of equilibrium is again on the left. Here we've got more products than reactants. So our position of equilibrium is on the right. So if we've got a high percentage yield, that means we've got more products. So the position of equilibrium is on the right. If I've got a low percentage yield, I've got less products. So the position of equilibrium is on the left. Right. So that's what the position of equilibrium is. What can we do to change it? So generally speaking, we want the position of equilibrium to be on the right because we want lots of products because we want to sell those and make lots of money. OK, so there are three things that can change the position of equilibrium. OK, so the important thing is, so one that's not here that we was here when we talked about rates of reaction as a catalyst. So a catalyst does not change 
the position of equilibrium. Okay, but temperature, pressure and concentration does. And when we change the position of equilibrium, we affect the composition of the mixture of substances. So it's the ratio of reactants and products changes. So the important thing here is this principle here. So this is something called the Chatelier's principle, which is when a factor is changed, the equilibrium moves to oppose the change. So if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to decrease the temperature. If we increase the pressure, it will shift to reduce the pressure. And if we increase the concentration, it will reduce, it will shift to reduce the concentration. Okay, so this is, I always call it the French guy's principle because I can't really pronounce his name, but Le Chatelier's principle. So the position of equilibrium shifts to try to cancel out any of the changes you make. So if I increase the concentration of A, it will try to reduce the concentration of A by pushing the position of equilibrium to the right. So I'll get more product. Okay, so if it's to do with temperature, so this is saying, so if I'm producing heat, this forward reaction is exothermic. So if I increase the temperature, it's going to favor this backwards reaction in order to try and reduce the temperature. So therefore, I'd get a lower yield because I get less product. So pressure only affects it when we've got gases involved. So if we haven't got any gases involved, then the pressure is not going to affect it. So if you, in this case, um, I've got more moles of gas on the left-hand side, so I've got two moles of gas on the left-hand side, and I've only got one mole of gas on the right-hand side. So if I increase the pressure, it will try to reduce the pressure by having less moles of gas, so the position of equilibrium will shift to the right. Okay, so pause the video and copy down these keynotes. So that I'm not going to talk you through these again. Um, in any great detail. So, the, but the position of equilibrium means the ratio of the products compared to the reactants. If it's on the right hand side, we get more products and reactants. If it's on the left hand side, we get more reactants and products. Okay, so the Chatelier's principle is when a factor is changed, the equilibrium moves to oppose the change. So, if we increase the temperature, it favours the endothermic reaction. If we decrease, it favours the exothermic reaction. Pressure increase favours the side with the fewest moles of gas, decrease favours the side with the most moles of gas. And for concentration, so pressures when we've got reactions involved in gases, concentrations when we've got um, reactions involving solutions. So if we increase the concentration of the reactants, we're going to get more products. If we decrease the concentration of the products, that's also going to make us more products. So just have a quick look at a case study here. So this is quite a famous reversible reaction. It's a harbour process. So. Um, here we have some nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to give ammonia, and this is an exothermic reaction. So if we apply the rules that we met on the previous slide, so it's a, it involves gases. So with the pressure, if I increase the pressure, that's going to favour the side with the fewest moles of gas. So the left-hand side has got one plus three. It's got four moles of gas, and the right-hand side has got two moles of gas. So if I increase the pressure, it's going to favour the side with the fewest moles of gas. So the position of equilibrium is going to shift to the right. Because it's exothermic, so we want, remember, we want lots of products, so I want it to shift to the right. So for temperature, what I would want is to make it shift to the right. I would, because the forward reaction is exothermic, I want to decrease the temperature and that will shift the position of equilibrium to the right, and I'll get more product. If I had a catalyst, that's going to increase the rate of reaction, but it's not, not going to affect the position of equilibrium. And if I want to get more products, I can increase the amount of reactants. That will shift the equilibrium to the right, or I can decrease the amount of the products. And that will also shift the equilibrium to the right. Um, so pause the video and have a go at these as examples. There's a separate video of a six mark model question. 
Okay, so I'm just going to um, want you to pause the video and have a go at these exam questions, and then the next slide will have the mark schemes on. So check your answers, make sure you're using the mark scheme strictly. Okay, pause the video and have a go at this one. Okay, and then just as a final plenary, um, you can draw a diagram. Try and draw a diagram to show what you've learned. Okay, thank you for listening. See you next time.